Hello, I'm Mark Wilson. I'm going to look at Aviva's 2017 results. Put simply, these results show strong signs of growth nearly everywhere, and Aviva's strategy is clearly paying dividends. I'm going to look at five key points. First, Aviva has broad-based growth across our key franchises, with the notable exception of Canada. These earnings growth across the board is translating into strong dividend growth. The dividend's up 18%. Now that's the fourth consecutive year of double-digit growth. Second, earnings per share. This is of course our key measure of profit. That's showing a marked improvement, jumping up 7%. Third, Aviva's growing faster than we expected, and so we are upgrading and bringing forward our financial targets for 2018 onwards. Fourth, our composite and digital strategies are directly impacting the results. They're coming through in the numbers now, which is really pleasing to see. And fifth, we're expecting to deploy two billion pounds of our pretty large pile of surplus capital in 2018. We've got a mixture of paying down expensive debt, returning capital to shareholders, and we aim to do a few bolt-on acquisitions. So let's look at the numbers in a little bit more detail. Well, sales are up significantly. Group value of new business, that's up 25%. And general insurance, net written premiums are up 11%. Now we've seen broad-based growth, and we have eight key markets that we focus on for these numbers, and then a number of strategic investments. And of those eight key markets, Six out of the eight of these major markets are delivering double-digit growth. I'm pretty happy with the franchises that we have left in the group. Now let's start with the largest of these, which is in our home market, the UK. It was a stronger year. It may surprise a few people to know, in fact, it was a very strong year. Sales were up and market share, pretty much across the board, was also up. Operating profit, that was up 13%. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because we've got that background of Brexit. But what happened was that during these uncertain times, there seems to have been a strong flight to quality, a flight to the big brands, and Aviva is, of course, the beneficiary of that. UK growth across the product lines was pretty much across the board. For example, we trebled bulk purchase annuity sales. We had direct motor customers, that's up 250,000 customers. We're winning new deals. The biggest deal last year, of course, was HSBC here in the UK. And the multi-product strategy is also working. Our composite strategy meant that we were focusing last year on large companies, and more of them bought more second products from us, which increased our market share and increased our sales. There was good news in other businesses around the world as well. Aviva investors kept up momentum, growing fund management profit 21%. Revenues for Inviva investors were also up 14%. Net inflows up 1.6 billion pounds. What about some of the other countries? France, Poland, Ireland and Singapore all saw comfortable double digit profit growth and contribute meaningfully to our bottom line. Now, some people will ask, what's driving this growth? Well, we've got a much stronger collection of businesses that are growing. We've kept the ones that we think can grow and we've sold the others. But there's also structural underlying drivers of growth in these markets, some of which are demographic and some of which are down to market changes like regulation, such as auto enrollment. And as a group, Aviva has a significant number of competitive advantages. We have a wide range of products. We've got strong brand and we've got digital processes and systems and intellectual property that I think is second to none. And what about digital? Well, we passed a key milestone in 2017. For the first time, we passed £1 billion in premium, which delivered pretty good double-digit growth. Across the world, 30% of our customers now have more than one product, showing the composite strategy is working. But it wasn't all great results. We had some weak spots as well. Canada, Canada had a very tough year. There's no hiding from that. Profit in Canada was down 83% to a mere 46 million pounds. And it's been a very challenging market there and we made some mistakes. We need to do better. Will this turn around? Well, we have a very detailed action plan that's well on the way to being implemented. 
However, when you look at Canada and the rest of the results, it actually highlights one of the strengths of the Aviva Group. It's a strength from diversity. It allows us where we may have a setback in one area to overcome it by delivering some pretty solid results in other areas. And you can see that in our overall headline results. What about our financial position? Our financial position has now been transformed. We expect to deploy £2 billion in 2018 and a further £1 billion in 2019. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing is we're going to reduce about £900 million of very expensive debt. At 7.4%, that's really a no-brainer. Approximately £600 million will then go to bolt-on acquisitions. And then in excess of £500 million will go to capital returns to our shareholders. We're also going to use our balance sheet to invest, to invest organically in our existing business. We're going to invest in digital. We're going to get a new talent where we don't have the skill set. We want to invest in simpler products that are easier for our customers and make Aviva even more competitive. So just to conclude, I think the numbers really speak for themselves. But you know, I'm very aware, a track record is only built up over time. But I'm also aware that we're adding to this track record every year. 2017 was another year where we've strengthened the capital and the cash. It was another year when we've been increasing our dividend again by double digits. It was another year where EPS has grown, but that EPS growth has accelerated and excitingly it's broad based. We're growing and I think we're growing faster than many of us ever could have expected.